Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and XRP is going nuts, and I wanted to put this video out right in the middle of it, but first I wanted to show you this from Kathy Wood. She bets on thriving IPO market under Trump. We will give liquidity events that they have not enjoyed during the last four years. She says, if the market continues to move forward in a way we believe it will, we believe the IPO market will open up, and that will give us a chance, lots of opportunities to diversify our portfolios, and it will give our venture funds liquidity events that they have not enjoyed during the last four years, she said. That is why I keep talking about my sponsor, Link2. You can go to linqto.com. They got Ripple Private Equity. They've got several different fintech plays as well as AI. They've even got drone technologies. There's all kinds of, of uh, different IP, uh, pre-IPO type issues, private equity. This is for accredited investors. Go check it out. You can go to linqto.com or you can download the app. I want to make sure everybody remembers because uh, Brad Combs is, is doing the his version of Black Friday for the XRP Las Vegas tickets. And I want to remind everybody, so May 27th through 29th is Bitcoin Las Vegas, which is a separate event. But rolling right into that is going to be XRP Las Vegas from May 30th to 31st. And it's going to be at the MGM Grand. I think the Bitcoin conference is at the Venetian, um, but X, you can go to xrplasvegas.com and I also have a link in the description, but he's got his, you can call it what you want, it's an early bird uh, price or Black Friday price, whatever. It, it doesn't say Black Friday. And also, before we get going on to remind everybody, today, the people that did the uh, rigged from the start documentary about XRP and the Ripple and the SEC case, um, the people that that uh, did the movie, they're offering the documentary today only until um, I guess midnight Pacific time. You can get it for you can download it for nine dollars and ninety nine cents versus what it has been fourteen ninety nine. So it'll go back to fourteen ninety nine tomorrow. Use uh, and you can get merch with the code Black Friday. So go check that out. And you can go to their website is www.fruitionproductions.com. Okay, now let's see what all is going on. XRP pump is melting faces. Please pray for $5. Oh, I'm praying. $5 would be lovely. In fact, many of you, if you're, if you're an, uh, an OG here, a long time ago, I uh, said that at $5, I was going to buy my kids, my poor children, a dog and name it Ripple at $5. These poor children have never had a dog. It's partially because of me. Um, so we're going to right, we're going to right some wrongs of their childhood, hopefully here shortly. <laughs> um, I wanted to point a couple of things out while you're right now, as I sit here, we're looking at an XRP that is let's see dollar 77 i mean it is dollar 76 it is moving folks okay but i want to put a couple thoughts in your head everything you're seeing is based is basically because of the new trump administration plus gary gensler announcing that he was going to step aside which everybody knew was going to happen anyway but there's a there's a couple of things to keep in mind here's one of them xrp is the only digital asset for the last five, four years while the, these bad guys have been in power, it is the only digital asset in the top 10 that was aggressively targeted by the government. And now, after all those years, there's nothing in its way. All of the others have been able to benefit from a market where the regulators were not aggressively attacking them. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, you name it. Dogecoin even, even the meme coins. They were allowed to freely trade with nobody going after them. Only XRP in the top 10. It's one of the many reasons that I've been fixated on XRP all these years. Here's another thing to keep in mind. Imagine, so, so right now, all we've got is Trump coming in and Gary Gensler is going to resign. 
But imagine what happens when it's announced that the SEC versus Ripple case is dismissed or settled. So I, I believe we've seen nothing yet. Because, and that was actually, Christian Carla was interviewed on Fox Business the other day, and they, they asked him, Gasparino asked him that specific question, and he said that he bets that it'll be dismissed. Now, what, does, what will that news do to the price? I think $2 would be a joke at that point. Um, so, and then here's the, if you've never looked at Fiat leak, let me hit, hit the refresh button here. This is one of the most satisfying, um, websites to visit when we're, when we have XRP surging, uh, because it shows you which countries, the, which exchanges and which countries where most of the buying is going on. I had to stop the computer cause I got a phone call. I got a phone call and it messed me up here. Um, but. To make the point, if you if you've never gone to Fiat Leak during these runs, it's always fun. It's f i a t l e a k dot com. Um, those it's always fun to look at. And then we've got uh, this. I wanted to uh, Yassin Mubarak had put this out. XRP is again demolishing everyone in the top ten. And I said the anti XRP army failed miserably. They have many failures ahead of them as well. And when I say XRP anti XRP army. I mean, all of those, and some of them are in the XRP community. Some of them are, are people who supposedly like XRP. They spent the last two years trying to scare everyone that they could try to scare out of XRP. There's no telling how many people out there don't even hold XRP going into this run because of those people. So they failed in terms of affecting people like me, but unfortunately, there's many people out there that probably dumped a lot of theirs because of them. They ought to be ashamed of themselves because they're people that actually know better, I believe. I believe there's some of them that are on people's payrolls. Now, look at this. This is from Bitwise Europe, formerly ETC Group. Is XRP the next big crypto spot ETF? Here are five key ob These are the five key observations. One, long track record. Um, XRP launched 2012, fifth oldest crypto, consistently top 10 by market cap, predates Doge and ETH, outperformed Bitcoin in consecutive bull runs. Two, high retail interest. XRP ranks to top four in retail allocation per EY survey, showing strong grassroots interest. Google Trends show high retail XRP interest, while institutions focus on Bitcoin, Ethereum, Sol. Retail investors hold 80% investors hold of Bitcoin ETF assets per 13F filings. Decline in U.S. regulatory uncertainty will benefit XRP. Ripple one land, landmark SEC case, making XRP one of two U.S. digital assets deemed non-securities. Core ruling that XRP isn't a security stands firm. Ripple awaits decision on pre-2020 sales. SEC appeal. Four, XRP already has a wide array of real use cases. XRP proves real utility with global cross-border payments, unlike many criticized cryptos. Major banks use XRP, SBI Remit, Lian Lian, CM Commercial Bank, for instant transfers. XRP serves as a medium of exchange. Five, XRP is still reasonably valued and has significant upside potential. XRP's MVRV ratio, key crypto valuation metric, similar to price to book ratio has returned to its long-term average despite recent price gains. Current MVRV levels indicate XRP is trading at fair. Let me see. It says more here at, uh, wait, did I, did I lose my place here? So the XR favorably for future growth. I think that's where I was. No shows promising upside potential to key factors. Okay. I think you get the point of what I was trying to show you here. There, there, there's, I mean, there's so many positive things about what's going on right now. It's not even funny. Then check this out. Ripple got their YouTube channel taken down today, right in the middle of this run. Nobody, nobody really knows what's going on there yet, but it's still something interesting to note. And then we've got this XRP institutions adaptation is just warming up. Listen to this. Uh, no, I would agree because we haven't yet made the jump where there is institutional buy-in. Uh, and I like to use the example, if uh, the Bank of Mitsubishi in Toko, Tokyo needs to transfer $100 million worth of yen to the New York branch and convert it to dollars, you need $100 million worth of yen in Tokyo and $100 million worth of dollars in New York. You're tying up 
200 million in capital. If you can attach that to a coin, it's simultaneously so the bank frees up half the capital. That's a big deal. But we haven't made that jump yet. Yeah, but it, it looks like it's coming, isn't it? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now I wanted you to see this, and then we're going to go into DAIXRP.com uh, where we're going to talk more about the price prices and where people think this is going to go. This is a once in 200 years opportunity, what XRP represents. And here's, the, this is a lady from City, Citibank. Our long careers, but it does feel like we're in the midst of a once in a lifetime shift. The architecture of finance, and by that I mean global currencies all the way down to payments, lending and deposits. It's unbundling bit by bit, and it's rebundling around a new, largely digital architecture. And this happened in trading over the last few decades, and it was an evolution. But what we're seeing now is more of a revolution with new architectures supplanting old ones. And the way our industry has operated for decades, it's going to be replaced with new ways. And the scale and the speed required to serve our clients, it's of a completely different magnitude. So here at City, where we move over $4 trillion globally each day, where we enable clients to issue payments in 144 different currencies, where we do business in more than 160 different countries and are on the ground in nearly 100 of them, well, we have a deep appreciation for scale and agility. And we're seeing how the world is becoming more global and more local at the same time and how it's becoming faster and how it's becoming more complex. We are reshaping our firm and our exceptional assets so that we maintain our relevancy and we continue to deliver for clients. SWIFT, as the community that underpins global flows, must make the same journey. Not just talk about it, but actually accelerate action. Because if traditional payments remain slow and comparatively clunky, as they are today, then it's a huge incentive for others to develop alternative large-scale global payment systems that could be cheaper and much faster. Already, the convergence between new technology and shadow banking risks derailing years of our progress. There's always been unregulated financial activity, but the new technology has the potential to scale that globally to the detriment of the regulated sector and the clients and the consumers we serve. We simply can't afford the regulated sector to be perceived as technologically deficient to the unregulated sector, and that's why we must relentlessly modernize our regulated financial system through public-private partnerships and through communities that bring our industry together, such as SWIFT. Okay, so now we're gonna go into DAIXRP. I'm gonna show you how we get to possibly $13, and I'm gonna show you some other things on pricing. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. Here we go.